are heading for Komodo Island in Indonesia. Komodo is an island of mystery, almost mythical, because of its famous residents, the Komodo dragons, the largest lizard on the planet. They can grow three meters long, and the average adult weighs around 75 kilograms. But one hulking fellow tipped the scales at more than 166 kilograms, over 356 pounds. Enough to send chills up your spine when you know what these fearsome predators can do. Komodo is one of the 17,000 islands, large and small, that make up Indonesia. Around 2,000 people live here in wary proximity to one of the most ferocious carnivores on the planet. The rugged island terrain consists of broad mountain valleys, savanna, and arid plains, characteristic Komodo dragon habitat. Surprisingly, scientists didn't officially discover the species until 1910, though we know that they've shared their island with humans for many hundreds of years. The Komodo dragon is part of the Varanid family. It's a carnivore, an ambush hunter, rapidly charging its prey without warning. It can reach a speed of 20 kilometers an hour over short distances when attacking, but it is also a carrion eater ready to chow down on almost any animal carcass. It's even been seen rooting through cemeteries, forcing villagers to move graves to protected areas. The Komodo dragon is perfectly adapted to its environment and can live to the age of 50. It's one of the rare vertebrates that can reproduce by parthenogenesis. Females are able to lay viable eggs without male fertilization. The species is endemic to Indonesia and is found mainly on Komodo, Rincha, and Flores Islands. Komodo dragons are designated vulnerable on the list of endangered species. The population is estimated at between four and 5,000. However, recent surveys recording an abnormally low number of reproductive females have alarmed the scientific community. In 1980, a national park was created for their protection. Park authorities are mandated to protect the territory essential for their survival, as well as ensuring that the Komodo dragons and their human neighbors can safely share the island. Biologists monitor the Komodo dragon populations throughout the vast Indonesian territory. Ahmad and Denny work for a local NGO, and over the years, they've become experts in all things Komodo dragon. Sedna 4 will serve as base camp for the next population census to take place on a number of islands in the sector. Okay, so here we are, the famous Komodo Island, Rinja. Uh, where do you work mainly? We have 10 sites, so we work in Komodo Island, Rincha Island, Nusa Kode Island, is also Gilimatang Island. Islands. Basically what we're doing is, this is a collaboration project between the National Park and our organization. organization. How many people work with your team? Uh, normally we work uh, seven uh, people involved. In this trip we have two visitors from the American Zoo, so one from Los Angeles Zoo, then the other one is from Knoxville Zoo. So because uh, our project is also funded by some zoos in America, so they come here help us and also checking to see, to see the and then see the uh, they also help learn yeah. how to maintain the population here so what do we do this morning uh, we will start to set up a camera, tra camera trap here the main idea is to know whether the dragon present in this area or not let's go then yeah, sure. okay. 
The census covers a huge territory, and the biologists are working with limited means. A number of American specialists have come to lend a hand to their local colleagues. The scientists hope to learn more about the still little understood species. This place is unique. Every time I wake up in the morning and I walk outside, I see something that I've either never seen before or only seen on TV, you know, only read about. It's, it's truly like waking up in Jurassic Park. Akhmad and Denny's work so hard. Their, their work ethic is unparalleled. And I, I feel like they have a really good understanding of what to do to fully understand Komodo dragons. That's the first sight? Yeah, this is our first sight. My ball? Yeah. You use goat all the time or? Always goat because oh, yeah. that's the best. Goat smells really bad yeah. and it's I think it's the best bait for attracting the dragon. Is there some problem with um, you know, people and livestock like goats. Yeah, sometimes the dragon kill goat that belong to uh, villagers because you know the deer is the main uh, prey for dragon and goat is just almost the same with yeah the deer. So we're take, taking the trial shot just yep. to make the frame is yeah the bait is on frame. Smile. So you use that to for the smell around? Yeah, it's, it's to attract the dragon. The dragon have very good sense of smell. They could smell for up to one kilometer. Awesome. They, call, they have an organ called uh, organ Jacobson, so they, they don't use the nose like us. By the end of the tongue, they, the chemical receptor, and they will transfer the chemical they uh, take from the air to the organs. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's to make sure it's cover all the area. The favorite prey are deer, goats, and water buffalo. But dragons are not picky eaters. They'll eat anything they can sink their teeth into, living or dead. They like to hide and wait for their prey near water, ready to charge the moment an animal lowers its guard. On the exterior, they seem like this otherworldly, you know, um, anachronistic creature that, that still exists on this earth. There was one situation where a dragon had tried to kill a water buffalo, had been unsuccessful, and the buffalo hit it, you know, with its head, threw it into the air, the dragon landed and didn't move for three days, and then finally after three days, picked itself up and walked away. <laughs> so the, just kind of to, to say that they're indestructible in a way. I mean, they just, they, you saw the scars on that individual and they fight and they tear each other up. They drink disgusting brackish water that's probably tainted with all kinds of things and yet they still persist. Overall, they're, they're strong. I mean, they, they can keep going. Biologists have set up a number of motion detector cameras all over the area. The smell of decomposing goat meat attracts the dragons within camera range, and their visit is documented. Ooh. No doubt about the smell. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-three picture. Oh. So. This is last one when we arrived. Mm, this is already dark. Pig? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boar. It's quite a lot here. Yeah. 
that data is, is, is taken and we get an idea how many, what the, the, the density of the dragon population is. If it's in, ultimately, if we do this every year, we can see if the, if the population is declining or increasing. Okay, we will split become two group. Uh, one group will be responsible uh, on the left hand side, uh, on the left hand side uh, to take three camera traps, uh, and then uh, the other side will be responsible to take two yeah. camera traps. Okay. okay. Denny leads the way. We have to keep our eyes open because dragons are experts at camouflage. Oh, there's a dragon up there. Oh, yeah. Can you see it? Hey. I would say it's probably a size for female. It might be one of the dragons uh, which is trapped on the camera trap. Yeah. Danny, the tail still looks fast, so she probably didn't lay this year, huh? Okay. So this is a female. We think it's a female. She's not very big. In fact, she's probably about my height. It's amazing to see how these animals just disappear in the landscape. That's the greatest danger, mistaking one for a tree trunk or a piece of dead wood. You don't want that to happen. Based on her body condition, uh, she probably hasn't laid eggs this year. She's still got a lot of fat store in her tail. Yeah. Um, she looks very healthy. Oftentimes you're walking down the trail and you're not paying close attention. The next thing you know, you're a couple meters away from a yeah. dragon. Beautiful animal. Yeah. Great to see. When hungry, dragons will go for any animal around, including their own young. There is kind of like shift between uh, adult activity and uh, hatchling activity. So in the morning, early in the morning, when the, the adult one active, all the baby will be on a tree, just to avoid oh, yeah. uh, cannibalism. Yeah. And then once the big dragon just slug, just because too hot, and then they can go to the ground. Okay. That's what I, we found so far from radio tracking study. Sometimes I would say female also, if if the male can have opportunity, they will kill the, the, the female. Yeah, that's right. That's happened in, in the zoo also. Yeah. 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 Is, is there something that they don't eat? <laughs> Everything that... <laughs> vegetable. <laughs> only vegetables. Everything. They are top carnivore here. The Indonesian government and the uh, Indonesian uh, National Park Service protect the dragons very well. It's the poaching, actually, of the prey items, the deer, the Sunda deer. Um, you know, they're a source of food, and without the deer, the Komodos are, would struggle. How are you? How, I'm fine. How I'm are good. you? How are you? Any nice picture? Uh, uh, we, are, we are going to. Start, okay, we great. just started downloading the images. Great. Yeah. Okay. Have a seat.
series. Wow, it's a big one. That's a big one. Very big. It's healthy. That's big. Big. <laughs> healthy as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it, this camera is record not only dragon but any animals any that any movement. More Too big. big. <laughs> Chicken. Uh, chicken. <laughs> jungle fall. Can you do some photo ID with dragon to recognize them? Uh, mm, I suppose when weird. they have big scar, but it's yeah. too difficult. It's very difficult. You know, they, there are some researchers use the camera to trying to identify how many dragon individual. individual. Uh, they trying to use the mark recapture method. Yeah. Because it, I think it's only could be done to animal that can be distinguished by the, by the images. Pattern, pattern. For example, tiger, tiger yeah, and also the rhino. It's hard to determine the exact number of Komodo dragons scattered over different parts of the island. The motion detector cameras will tell the scientists if there are Komodo dragons in a particular area but the technique doesn't provide any specific information on individuals. If biologists want to follow the development of specific Komodo dragons over time, they have to capture them. A number of dragons have small transmitters implanted under the skin that identify and differentiate them. The catalog of Komodo dragons is a vital source of information on the biology of the species. But in order to access this information, you have to capture individuals. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the whole team meets at the entrance to Komodo National Park. For us, it's a big day. Capturing and handling this dreaded and powerful animal is a real challenge. Everyone is assembled and ready for action. The modular cages will be carried into the heart of dragon habitat. The biologists are confident they'll be able to catch one of the animals tagged in previous captures. So these are the cages used to trap the Komodo dragons. They have just arrived from the village, so we'll take them up to the site. We'll set out bait, and let's hope we manage to trap one. Recapturing dragons is the only way to monitor the development of individual animals. And population monitoring allows biologists to track the animal's health over time and observe the growth of the Komodo dragons in ideal conditions. The National Park is the last peaceful haven for this endangered species. The team will be assisted by staff from the National Park. These park wardens have enormous experience in dragon territory and know how to react in the event of an attack. But no weapons. They defend us using only sturdy forked sticks to push the dragons away. One trap will be set up here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Coming, coming. We are setting the cages up here. There are chunks of goat meat set out, and a male has already picked up the scent and is trying to approach. The guards are trying to control him, so it should not be too hard to trap one. It takes several men to manage this large, hungry male. The smell of the goat meat excites the animal, but the park wardens keep things under control. There are three baits that we put. One is in the pond, yeah. the other one in the middle part, and the other one is uh, tied to the string to the, to, mechanical. Yeah, the mechanical, yeah. so it's activated. So when the dragon came, they will grab the first one, the second one, and when he grabbed the third one, it will be, he can lift the traps and wait the dragon. Okay. Everything's ready. 
The signal's being given. Now the wardens can get out of the way of the increasingly famished dragon. We've got to be careful not to get bitten because they charge very quickly. It's amazing. They rarely attack humans, but when they do, it's a serious matter. What's the plan? We will open the door? Uh, we will noose first, open yeah. one of the window here, and then uh, pull uh, one by one from the tail, and then hind leg, and then tie the hind leg. After that, pull again, uh, tie the front leg, and then try to measure this dragon. Okay. okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. The animal's strength is tremendous. It's crucial that his powerful feet not touch the ground. He could knock over anyone trying to pin him down if he gets his feet under him. Okay, you can sit there. Yeah, sit there. Okay, yeah, okay. Good. okay. A little bit more. Okay, Ahmad. Oh. They tape the animal's jaws shut to prevent him from using this fearsome weapon. Karung. Okay, sidik lepas. Wah, sidik lepas. Now we're going to check the dragon whether it's been tagged or not. So we usually put the tag on the right hand leg. So we're going to check it with this thing. With the green. Yep. Yeah, so it's already. Okay. So it's already ID. And I'm going to check. So can help. Yeah. Kosong, kosong, kosong. 643. 58BA. So we're going to check the record. Whether it's from this island or from other islands. Just make sure. Yeah, the first time we catch this animal is on 2004, so it's 10 years ago. Okay. What is the weight or the length? Total length, so total body length. Only 10 kilograms. 10 kilograms. Wow. It's still. Now it's. I it's would say this young. is 60 kilograms. No. We'll see later. Yeah. We will and see. And yeah. the total length is only 1.8 meters. <laughs> uh, we have to measure the snout vent length okay. because if. A, the total length is important, but just because the dragon is not regenerate their tail, yeah. so this is the, the okay. important one. Hold here, okay, thank you, Zhang. 133.5. Total body length, uh, 2.66. 2 uh, pull him. <coughs> Up. Up. Okay, one little moment. One okay. Little moment. One, two, three. <laughs> it's more than 10 kilos, that's for sure. It's 60. 60? 60. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a male because usually the female is never weight more than 40 kilograms okay. and never. Uh, had long more than 2.4. 2. So 2.4 2. 4 is the maximum for female. We never found female more than 2.4. So it, we can tell for sure this is a male. And what 
What is the uh, sex re ratio male-female uh, in the wild? Scientists believe that it's the ratio is one female for three males, but we still want to find out whether it's true or not. How long can they live? Uh, for the male, they could live up to 40 years, but uh, when we're trying to estimate the age, some of the male could, some of very healthy animal, the male one can live up to 60, oh, yeah. but mostly they live 40 years old. While the females live shorter than the males, probably they only live for 30 years. This pain is telling us that the dragons already been measured. Yeah. So when the dragons come to the trap again, so we didn't just have to let them go. Tie, just let them go. Uh, okay. First, we untied the legs, uh, but people who handle the legs make sure uh, his leg doesn't uh, touch the ground because once he touch the ground, he will be very strong and, and, and angry. Guys, one, two, three. He's angry. Excellent. He's angry, eh? Excellent. The strength of these animals is incredible. Wow. He's not happy there. This Komodo dragon can now return to the peaceful forest of the park. He's lucky to live in a protected area. Here, hunting is banned. This allows his prey to reproduce and be present in large numbers. When food is abundant, the dragons rarely fight each other. But that's not always the case on other islands where there is less prey and where cannibalism has been observed. Komodo dragons do not live solely in protected parts where human activity is strictly regulated. In some areas, dragons and villagers have to share space, and it isn't always easy. What is the relationship between the villagers and the Komodo dragons? Uh, there is a mythology. Uh, the Komodo dragons actually uh, family with, with the villagers. And also when a dragon tried to came into the village, for example, when they smells food and the people uh, didn't try to harm the dragon, they just pushed the dragon away. We stopped at one of the small isolated villages where people have to interact with Komodo dragons. Age-old myths underlie these shared living arrangements. Nice to meet you. John. John, I come from Canada. Canada. When I was a little girl, my parents told me a story of a woman who gave birth to twins, one a human, the other a dragon. The dragon ran into the forest. Since that time, we have a blood tie with the dragons, a tie so strong that we are forbidden to kill them. We are not allowed to harm them in any way. The dragons are actually humans with tails. These widespread beliefs provide a level of protection for the dragons. Dragons often attack cats or goats. One came right into my kitchen and ate my cat. Traditionally, all families kept goats. Not anymore, though, 
because they'll just get eaten by dragons. This is where the dragons live. It's their home. And that's just fine, because tourists come here to see them. It's fine with me if they attack cats, chickens, and goats, but not our children. Goats, cats, dogs, and even chickens regularly fall victim to dragons who prowl the village. Villagers continue to hold the mythical animal in high respect, despite horrifying and sometimes deadly encounters. It was a Friday. The children were all making their way home after a day at the beach. My son was sitting on the stairs. All of a sudden, a dragon leapt on his legs and threw him to the ground. I heard screams and ran to try to rescue him. When I got outside, there was blood everywhere. His belly had been ripped open. When I got there, I screamed, my son is dead. I couldn't believe my eyes. I felt his last breath, and I fainted. When I woke up, my child's body looked like the carcass of a dead animal. I'm still grieving. The wound is still there. It's still hard for me to talk about. I was alone walking in the forest. A dragon came up behind me and bit down on my hand. I had a knife, but I didn't use it. I didn't want to hurt it. He's a member of my family. I started kicking him to defend myself. Eventually, some people from the village came to help me. They got me to the hospital. I stayed there for a week. Is it still very painful today? The nerves were damaged. You can see, this is where he grabbed me. When I move my hand, it's still painful. But I have to keep working to survive. Komodo dragons are natural predators designed to kill their prey. That's why they're at the top of the food chain. They've been on the island much longer than humans have. They lived in ecological balance with the other species in their ecosystem before their territory was occupied. For them, hunting for food is essential for their survival. It's also the role they play in nature, their vital function within the great chain of life. When hungry, Komodo dragons hunt with no concept of right and wrong. They don't distinguish between a goat, a deer, or a child. I 
The dragon was 3.5 meters long. The next week, guards came and took him to another island. I can't blame the dragon. It was my son's destiny. That's all there is to it. Every Friday I think about it. I pray that my son is happy where he is. Destiny? Well, maybe. When individual lives are ruled by a society's values and beliefs. In the past, goats were sacrificed as offerings to satisfy the appetite of the predators and ward off attacks. But animal protection groups opposed the practice, declaring it cruel and immoral. So the children have learned to be wary of the Komodo dragons who share their village, their playgrounds, their daily lives. But an ambush can happen anytime. Yet here, it's all put down to destiny. Villagers built a wall to protect the schoolyard. But the school is at the far end of the village, near the mountain, where the dragons lurk. Here, spiritual values, beliefs, and mythology do more to safeguard this endangered species than the concepts of protection and nature conservation. Did you have any uh, incident yourself? Were you uh, bitten by a dragon before? Uh, for this research, we catch almost a thousand individual dragon and one dragon can uh, there several times so it's almost more than 2,000 captures and there's no accident that is something that we always proud of yes of course i think as long as we respect wild animal as wild animal it won't become a big problem so yeah. we can learn how to catch the dragon safe for the dragon and then also Safe for researcher. researcher also. But in reality, there's no safety for this endangered species. I would say their biggest threat would be any kind of loss of interest. Um, you know, this, this park is good and it's, it's stable right now, but I would say if people tend to stop being interested for whatever reason, I worry that they may not protect them as well as they should. They may not be as vigilant in, in protecting them, and, and that could be a problem. Like so many species that are, that, are, that are threatened or endangered, it's habitat destruction. With the introduction of, of invasive species comes also disease. And you're talking about a population of, of animals here that's probably less than 5,000 individuals. That's not too many animals. So uh, if a disease you know, was introduced to the islands, they could quickly be wiped out. Despite the many threats to its precarious existence, no one wants to see this extraordinary carnivore disappear. The Komodo dragon represents much more than a formidable predator within an ecosystem. Here, it's considered a full member of the family of living beings. Only time will tell if these traditions can spare the largest dragon on the planet from extinction. <laughs>